Presbyterian Church and this fourth Sunday after Epiphany, January 30th, 2022, and we welcome those who are watching from your home via our live stream, and we welcome you into this worship space. Susie's working on, see, this is the, this is the message I had last week, and I couldn't figure it out, so she might be up here a minute trying to get this all working, but if you have a bulletin, huh? Ignore you? We'll ignore you, Susie. Um, you have a bulletin, so everything that's on the screen is usually on the bulletin, so um, we'll go forward. Uh, announcements this morning, I just want to let you know that I'll be at the Nora Springs Nursing Home during worship at 2 o'clock on Tuesday. We do have communion next Sunday, and then our annual meeting will be on February 13th. That is Super Bowl Sunday. And... Uh, Hopefully it will be a quick one because if the Chiefs win today, I will be wanting to go to that Super Bowl. Not in California, but I want to watch it. Um, along with Super Bowl Sunday, there is another Super Bowl, so it's S-O-U-P-E-R, and that is a something that a lot of churches do across this time of year where they collect um, loose offering change and dollar bills or whatever to help tackle hunger in our communities. And so next week, I'm gonna have a soup bowl or can here, and uh, we're going to collect for the next couple of weeks, and all that loose change and dollar bills are going to go to the food pantry of Floyd County. So you're just gonna go to Floyd County, Osages is going to go to Mitchell County. And so you can bring uh, whatever you want. Um, it's just something to help us uh, support our local food pantry, food bank in this area. So keep that in mind. Um, we'll make sure that that gets out in this uh, midweek devotional email and uh, just bring whatever you have laying around. Are there other announcements to lift up for the good of the whole this morning? Then let us turn our attention to why we're here to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and for all who are able, will you please stand and join me in our call to worship. <clears throat> Insisted on our own way. 
we have even let love end. Forgive us and heal us, dear God, through Jesus Christ, your love incarnate. Amen. God has loved us since the very beginning, and God's love for us will never, ever end. So do not fear. Have faith in God's steadfast love, God's healing power, and God's ability to make all things new. Amen. Absolutely. That 
homeliness that we have in our homes is to be also brought into the church. And I know you all feel that when you come into even Presbyterian church. That warmth, that love, the hugs, even though sometimes we get a little nervous now with the virus, but they're there. We know people want to do that. That's what makes church home. And when I teach my kids in confirmation, I always tell them to remember that home church. You're always going to be welcomed in that door. No matter where you go on life journey, you're going to be able to walk through that door and be, oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. And that's so warm and loving. The other piece I tell them is, don't be a stranger to those who come in the door that might not belong or that you might not know because the church changes once in a while. And so we need to remember that hominess and that feeling of home to everybody who enters. And so that goes along with our scripture this morning in Luke chapter four. And hear how Jesus actually wasn't really welcomed in his home church. And we go to the verse 22 to verse 30, actually verse 21. So Luke 4, 21 to 30. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from Jesus' mouth. And the people said, is, that, is not this Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. And yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow in Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl Jesus off the cliff. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went on his way. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And let us pray. Holy and loving spirits and loving God, we feel you in our midst today and we just thank you for being in this house. We ask for that spirit to now enter into our hearts and our minds, to open the, our ears to hear the message you have for us today. And Lord, I ask, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So now you have to participate just one more time. How many of you have a show that you like to watch on TV from the fall until the spring? Like NCIS or Blue Bloods or any of that? Raise your hands. Only a few of you. I'm surprised. At Osage, every single one of them. If you've ever watched a series like that, you know in the spring, so I'm going to take NCIS because it's fresh on my mind. In the spring, there's always a cliffhanger. And this last spring, so 2021, Gibbs, the main NCIS guy, was supposed to die. And we waited, and we waited, and we waited until the fall when he actually did die and and everything's okay. But those writers, those screenwriters, capture our attention. How many of you watch The Dukes of Hazard? 
Bo and Luke Duke and Daisy Duke. Daisy was the favorite of the guys. Bo was my favorite. And think of that when the General Lee, which is the car, was going off a cliff, getting away from Roscoe Pico train, and it just hung in the air, and they cut to commercial. I was probably about 10 years old when I was watching this, and now it's, you can't play it anymore, don't ask me why, but I would sit there and wait for that commercial to end so I could tell if that car was gonna get across the ravine. It's not much different than our gospel lesson is this morning. The gospel of Luke wrote this, or Luke, writer wrote this scripture for the people to try to understand that there's cliffs that we often have hanging. I mean, we're left with, last week we were left with, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And what did Jesus mean by that? And today we didn't really get much more of the story except he just kept going to say, well, this is how it is. Most prophets, most people who leave their town and come back tend to get quote unquote rejected. Or think about your children who have gone off to school and have come back with new ideas. It may not quite be the same as what you taught them. And you kind of look at them and say, really? Because it's happened to me. Not so much with my parents, but it happened to my home in my home church. I was seminary student in my last year, and I was asked to come and fill the pulpit one Sunday. And I said, sure, I'll do that. And I gave a sermon, probably a little bit more progressive than what my home church is, talking about racism and talking about other things like that. And all of a sudden, we get done with worship, and I thought it went well, and I'm in the back reading my home congregation that have known me since I was a baby. And one of them says, that was a nice sermon, Dixie. Thanks for letting us know what's going around in other cities. Thank you for laughing, Susie, because <laughs> we know that certain things happen, not only just in other cities, but it does happen in our home church or in our home uh, town, too. The point of that is, is that they really didn't want to hear some of the truth. Because we tend to live in our own little world. I tell people, I, I lived under a rock for many years. I didn't know about racism. I didn't know about um, gays and lesbians and transgenders. I lived on a farm, and that's what I knew. But education has brought me a long way. And what Jesus is coming to with this scripture in Luke is that we need to open our eyes to more spiritual aliveness around us. He's trying to tell him, the people that I'm not just this little boy running around a carpenter's shop that you once knew. I've grown from that. I've been blessed with the spirit. Remember those of us who were here last week, and if you watched us on the screen, we did the hokey pokey in worship. We're filled with the Spirit, and when we are filled with the Spirit, we look totally different than what people actually expect. But people got mad. They got upset with Jesus. They didn't want to accept him as this grown man with a different way of thinking. And yet it happens to the best of us. Jesus was aware that the people of Nazareth were yearning for and yelling for him, for Jesus, to do all the same kind of healings and all the same kind of miraculous cures that he did in Capernaum and Galilee and Sidon. He want, they wanted his attention in Nazareth. They only wanted him to do that for them. They wanted privilege. They wanted to be that preferential treatment. And Jesus says, there's more people out there than just you. 
what he was trying to tell the people of Nazareth and tell us today is that God's love extends beyond the walls of any church, beyond the walls of any home, beyond the walls of any community. Because he will heal those who we least expect. In scripture, it says Jesus healed the immigrant widow, or God did with Elijah, and that there was this widow in Israel who was also healed, and that there was lepers in Israel, and Naaman was the only foreigner who was healed as well. He wanted his hometown people to know that it is more than just him. And that's when they got angry. And they led him to this cliff, and I wish the screen was <clears throat> working because it, it showed the actual cliff that was in Nazareth. And they took him to this cliff, and it's all rocky here. And he stood there with his back up against this cliff. And I can just imagine this crowd of angry people around him. And yet he was able to walk through. That's another cliffhanger because it doesn't tell us how he was able to walk through. It doesn't tell us where he was going. But in about eight weeks, we know that Jesus was led up another hill. He was forced to carry a cross. And he was crucified by the Roman guards. So what the people of his hometown were doing in this scripture is nothing new for him. And it's really the first mention of Jesus being on a cliff and Luke emphasizing that to kind of foreshadow what's going to happen. People don't like Jesus telling them the truth. They were filled with rage, and they wanted him out. Maybe some of us can relate to that, relate to the people, knowing some of that anger and some of that rage, because when somebody betrays us or puts a new twist on something we've believed for so many years, it's mind-boggling. It changes us. And sometimes we harm people in the way of our anger, even though we may not mean it. Jesus came to do one thing, well, several things, but in this scripture, it was one thing, to rescue those that experience or have experienced that type of anger and that type of rejection. He wanted people to know that you are all loved. He not only loves the people of Nazareth, but he cares about all of our sufferings. He doesn't want us to feel like we all have to suffer. Jesus walked through that angry crowd and went on his way. And we're reminded that God comes to us in the word and sacrament that he comes through the Bible and sermons and studies through baptism and Holy Communion. Him coming to us is nothing fancy. There's no bells and whistles or, you know, lights shining upon anything. God just simply comes. And when we have our eyes of faith open, we see and hear how God continues to come. And it's in those moments when we doubt that nothing else can ever top that. But we also don't doubt that anything, nothing could come out of Nazareth or if you bring it to Rudd, Iowa, that nothing good could come out of Rudd, Iowa. Everyone is good in Jesus' eyes. We focus on this cross week after week. 
and we get to see how beautiful it is in the eyes of everyone. When a stranger comes in, remember that that cross is not just for us, it's for all. And be reminded that there is a sign that hangs from it that says, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, and his love poured out for everyone. He was sent to do that, and he was sent for all. And we thank his Father for that mission and ministry of his life. Amen. Let us turn to our hymn of response, which is 369, Lord of all hopefulness. <laughs>
that we have given as expressions of our love for you and our neighbors, that they may bring us closer to fulfillment, your reign of peace and love, through Jesus Christ, our sovereign. Amen. You may be seated. This morning in our prayers, we lift Ann Adams. Those of you who know Ann, she is having surgery tomorrow, and um, she'll be out for a few weeks, but hopefully it will all go well for her. And we also pray for the family of Don Ryman. And uh, that funeral is here tomorrow um, at 2 o'clock. For those of you who would like to come, um, there is also a visitation from 1 until 2 here at the church. So are there other loved ones to be lifted up in prayer this morning? Sue. Sue Brenda. She is doing well. And she is watching this morning, so good to have you with us, Sue. Other loved ones to be lifted up? Our friend Butch, Butch. appears to have turned a corner. Oh, wonderful. We'll just keep him in our prayers, though. Any other loved ones? Then let us come to God in prayer. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for helping us to hear this message of being backed into a cliff, but able to feel your spirit and move us towards something better, something like our home. Help us to continue to welcome those who come in and be a part of us. Lord, we ask that you hear our prayers that have been spoken and unspoken upon our hearts and our minds. We come today, Lord, and we continue to pray for Sue Branda as she is still recovering and gaining strength from her illness a couple weeks ago. We pray, Lord, that you be with the family of Don Ryman and pray for safe travels upon them as they come and celebrate his life tomorrow. Be healing for them, Lord and help them find your hope and strength in it all. Where we also continue to pray for Butch and pray that he is also finding your healing hand upon him, being able to be with his family and friends. And Lord, we pray for Ann Adams and pray for the doctors and surgeons that will be with her tomorrow and we pray for her healing. Lord, we also continue to pray for our loved ones at the nursing home and at the rehab centers and those who may be homebound. And we pray, Lord, that your love is able to enter into those places and be with the people. Help them find your light. Lord, we also pray for our doctors and nurses who are in the hospitals or in home health care or in those nursing homes and settings. We pray, Lord, that your strength and your continued guidance continue to be with them, Lord, as they still fight this pandemic. And we pray, Lord, that they're able to seek some peace and reassurance. Lord, we also continue to pray for our men and women of the military and their families. We pray, Lord, for the people in Ukraine and Russia and our, our own military who are possibly getting ready to go and protect that line. Lord, we just lift these concerns to you and know that you have a plan and know that it is in your hands. Because, Lord, Lord, that is the true faith of knowing. And even with these concerns to you, Lord, we also lift to you our joys in life. We celebrate today, Lord, with people who are celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries of this week. We celebrate being the family of God here in this place that we do call home. And we celebrate, Lord, just be in your presence, and we celebrate your son, Jesus Christ, 
who taught us so much. And we come with the prayer that he taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now if you're able, will you please stand and join me in our closing hymn, Just As I Am, Without One Plea, hymn number 445. <laughs> Thank you.